This is Chapter 54 of The Boy's Life of Mark Twain. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, visit LibriVox.org. The Boy's Life of Mark Twain by Albert Bigelow Payne. Chapter 54 Return After Exile. News came to Vienna of the death of Orion Clemens at the age of seventy two. Orion had died as he had lived, a gentle dreamer, always with a new plan. He had not been sick at all. One morning early he had seated himself at a table with pencil and paper, and was putting down the details of his latest project, when death came, kindly, in the moment of new hope. He was a generous, upright man, beloved by all who understood him. The Clemenses remained two winters in Vienna, spending the second at the Hotel Kranz, where their rooms were larger and finer than at the Metropole, and even more crowded with notabilities. Their salon acquired the name of the Second Embassy, and Mark Twain was, in fact, the most representative American in the Austrian capital. It became the fashion to consult him on every question of public interest, his comments, whether serious or otherwise, being always worth printing. When European disarmament was proposed, editor William T. Stead of the Review of Reviews, wrote for his opinion. He replied, Dear Mr. Stead, the Tsar is ready to disarm. I am ready to disarm. Collect the others. It should not be much of a task now. Mark Twain. He refused offers of many sorts. He declined ten thousand dollars for a tobacco endorsement, though he liked the tobacco well enough. He declined ten thousand dollars a year for five years to lend his name as editor of a humorous periodical. He declined another ten thousand for ten lectures, and another offer for fifty lectures at the same rates, that is, one thousand dollars per night. He could get along without these sums, he said, and still preserve some remnants of his self-respect. It was May 1899 when Clemens and his family left Vienna. They spent a summer in Sweden, on account of the health of Jean Clemens, and located in London apartments, 30 Wellington Court, for the winter. Then followed a summer at beautiful Dollis Hill, an old house where Gladstone had often visited, on a shady hilltop just outside of London. The city had not quite enclosed the place then, and there were spreading oaks, a pond with lily pads, and wide spaces of grassy lawn. The place today is converted into a public garden called Gladstone Park. Writing to Twitchell in midsummer, Clemens said, I am the only person who is ever in the house in the daytime, but I am working, and deep in the luxury of it. But there is one tremendous defect. Levy is all so enchanted with the place, and so in love with it, that she doesn't know how she is going to tear herself away from it. However, there was one still greater attraction than Dollis Hill, and that was America, home. Mark Twain, at sixty-five, and a free man once more, had decided to return to his native land. They closed Dollis Hill at the end of September, and October 6, 1900, sailed on the Minnehaha for New York, bidding good-bye, as Mark Twain believed and hoped, to foreign travel. Nine days later, to a reporter who greeted him on the ship, he said, "'If I ever get ashore, I am going to break both of my legs, so I can't get away again.'" End of chapter 54